Welcome to the Money Hour with host Tina Mitchell. Tina Mitchell, MLO 145420, and Keelan Harvey, MLO 133075, are licensed loan originators with Highlands Residential Mortgage Limited, NMLS 134871. The views expressed by the speakers on the following program are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views of Highlands Residential Mortgage Limited, nor are they necessarily endorsed by Highlands Residential Mortgage Limited. Now, in the studio, local mortgage expert, Tina Mitchell. Welcome to the Money Hour at 1150 AM KKNW, the Saturday, October 23rd show. You can also listen to my show on podcast, Facebook premiere, or on our show YouTube channel. In addition, for more information on upcoming events, please go to Tina Mitchell events.com. And I am your host, Tina Mitchell, bringing in expert advice and inside knowledge on today's events and our local economy and how they affect your money. If you are hearing my show at a different time, you are listening to a rebroadcast. I am here to answer any questions or connect you with the guests that I have on the show today. Please call the show at 1-855-411-50. Again, that's 1-855-411-50 or online at themoneyhour.com. And our lineup for today's show, we have Doug Peterson of Get Priorities Straight LLC, manage and protect your cash flow and be ready for whatever happens. We also have John Anderson of Plan Smart Law Group. You don't know what you don't know, and it's costing you a fortune. And my last guest in studio, Joyce Jonashite of Uncar Life Health general Medicare information. Also, if you are watching my show on Facebook Premiere or my YouTube channel, I would like to introduce our engineer over at Hubbard Radio, Benny. Hi, everyone. <laughs> I'm shy. Yeah, he's so he's so shy <laughs> or not. <laughs> Love Benny definitely could not do uh, what I do without all of the behind the scenes uh, support that Benny provides. So thank you, Benny. Great information and great guest in studio. For more information on any topic discussed, please call the show at 1-855-411-50. Again, that's 1-855-411-50 or online at themoneyhour.com. Let's go ahead and start out today's show as we do each week with a little bit of money chat. Money. Tina Mitchell here with your money chat. The Federal Reserve Bank of Atlanta has released a GDP estimate of just 0.5% this week. This is down from over 6% just two months ago in mid-August. Two quarters of negative GDP constitutes a textbook definition of recession. Through interest, so though interest rates may be pressured higher from inflation, a 2023 recession may be positive for rates and for the housing market. Now, existing home sales, which measure closings on existing homes, were up 7% to an annual pace of 6.29 million units. Sales are down 2.3% year over year. Single family sales were up 7.7% and are down 3.1% year over year. Inventory was down about 1% from last month to 1.27 million homes for sale in the US. Inventory is down 13% year over year. First time home buyers have accounted for 28% of sales, which is down from 29%. Cash buyers remain stable at 23%, but is up from 18% last year. Investors purchased 13% of homes, which was down from 15% the pre previous month. The uh, Master Builder Association released their mortgage application data for last week, showing that applications to purchase a home were down 5%. Year-over-year -year purchases are down 12%. Again, tough comps, but with factoring in the rise of cash buyers, they are down close to 6%. With inventory down 13% year-over-year, prices are up almost 20% and interest rates a quarter percent higher. Now, refinances were down 7% last week and 22% lower than we were this time last year. Refinances made up 63% of the total mortgage transactions, down from 64%. Now, yesterday, the NH, NAHB housing market index, which is a real-time read on builder confidence, rose four per points to 
80 from the month of October, which is the largest monthly increase since last November. Looking at the components, current sales rose uh, 80 to points rose up to 87 points. Sales expectations rose three percent, three points to 84, and buyer traffic rose four points to 65. This report is an index of zero to 100, with any reading above 50 signaling expansion. Now, builder confidence still remain at strong levels despite the negative media and challenges that we're seeing. Housing starts declined 1.6 percent in September at an annual pace of. 1.55 million homes. Year-over-year year starts at 7.4% higher than this time last year. Single-family starts, which is most important, is flat month-over-month month at a 1.08 million pace. Now, all of the decline was in multifamily. Two to four units were up 20%, but five units plus saw a huge decline. It's a miracle to see that the single family starts were unchanged levels with the labor and supply chain issues. Now, permits, which are a good forward-looking indicator of starts, declined 7.7% last month and are flat year over year. Single family permits, however, were down 1% to the lowest level in 14 months. Because permits are a leading indicator for future single family starts, it signals that supplies is going to remain tight into the future. While that does make it difficult to find a home, it should be supportive of home prices. Now, completions were down 4.6%, which shows how much of a backlog builders have to work through. Initial job claims, which measures individuals filing for unemployment benefits for the first time, were down 6,000 to 290,000, which is the lowest rating since before the pandemic. Continued claims, which measures individuals who continue to receive benefits, fell 122,000 to 2.48 million, which is also a post-pandemic low. Federal COVID plans, including the pandemic unemployment assistance and emergency claims, fell by 140,000 as those plans continue to expire, while extended benefits fell, fell by 88,000. There are now 3.28 million people in total receiving benefits, which is down over 370 thousand from last week. The claims pictures continue to make a significant improvement, but the question is, when are these individuals going to return back to the work floors? And that's your money chat for this week. Coming up next in the money hour, Doug Peterson of Get Priority Straight LLC. Manage and protect your cash flow and be ready for whatever happens right here at 1150 AM KKNW. You are listening to The Money Hour at 11.50 a.m. KKNW, the Saturday, October 23rd show. You can also listen to my podcast, Facebook premiere show, or the show YouTube channel. In addition, for more information on any of my upcoming events, you can go to tinamitchellevents.com. And I am your host, Tina Mitchell. It is a great day to talk about money, and that is what the show is all about, how to make money, save money, so you can have a better quality of life for you and for your family. If you are hearing my show at a different time or day, you are listening to a rebroadcast. I am here to answer any questions, or more importantly, to connect you with the guests that I have on the show today, please call the show at 1-855-411-50. Again, that's 1-855-411-50 or online at themoneyr.com. And now in studio, virtual studio, we have Doug Peterson of Get Priority Straight LLC talking about managing and protecting your cash flow so you can be ready for whatever happens right here on 1150 AM KKNW. Doug, welcome back to the show. It's great to be back. Great to see you again. Thank you so much. And a little bit about Doug. Over the last 20 years, Doug Peterson has helped people align their goals and visions, both personally and professionally. He founded Get Priority Straight in 2018 to provide a program to help individuals maximize their personal income, and improve their ability to invest. Having founded and run eight businesses in his career, Doug has perfected a system that works regardless of industry, marital status, or income. He is currently working with Amazon manager, wealth managers, real estate professionals, attorneys, and technology professionals. Doug also managed the band 
before dawn who did backup vocals on heart's first album dream boat annie you are one professional guy doug something or professional <laughs> not the word i'm looking for um uh how about, yeah. how about can't hold a job I did yeah. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Well, Doug, it's always great to have you in the show. Uh, for anybody that's listening to the show for the first time, Doug is a regular contributor. Uh, he is the only person that I have on my show that represents this space in really helping to coach you with your money. So Doug, why did you pick the title for today's show, Manage and Protect Your cash flow and Be Ready for Whatever Happens? Thanks, Tina. Yeah, I get confused with being a financial planner, and I'm not. I'm kind of a more of a pre-financial planner, a pre-wealth manager. And it's amazing how many people don't have an emergency fund. They don't really know what it costs to live. They don't have reserves. They haven't really planned for infrequent expenses. So I think if people really learn the basics of cash flow management, which you'd be surprised how many business owners don't know, uh, it's really understanding where all your money's going and when it's going out and how much you have left, regardless of your checkbook balance. Yeah, isn't that, it's, it's interesting of, in a lot of business owners, they have a lot of focus on their business, but then their personal goes to the side. We're going to talk about that today uh, as well, Doug, but can you share the difference between budgeting, record keeping, and spending plan? Yeah, so budgeting is kind of a bad word. Budgeting, people look at budgeting and go, oh, it's a diet. I don't want to do that. It means I won't be able to get what I want. And all budget really is, if you look up the definition, is a projection. It's usually a 12-month projection of what you think is coming in and what's going out. And most people think they're budgeting, so they write down a projection, and all they do is write down what, where everything went and their record keeping. A spending plan is dynamic. A spending plan is real time, knowing how much you've allocated and how much you have left. So you know you're really doing a spending plan. I like to call it an intentional spending plan because you decide where the money goes before you spend it. If you ask how much is left on the 28th of the month, how much is left in our entertainment fund or our groceries? And instead of just spending more, if you're short, you take it out of someone or somewhere else so you don't keep raising your overhead every month. Yeah, and if you're listening and you don't like the word budget, because as Doug said, majority of people don't, however, you know the importance of budgeting, just like dieting as well. You may not like the word, but you know what it's going to do and have that positive impact. So Doug, how do you plan for the unseen expenses? Because those pop up every, every occasional now, now and then. Yeah. But often people say almost every other month I get a surprise. Yeah. And most of these surprises aren't surprises, really. If you look back, when you bought a car, you committed to car expense. Oh my gosh, I got a $2,200 bill on my car. Well, cars cost money. And if you keep records, you know they cost a lot of money. So even a good used car, I recommend $150 a month. So you're now looking at things that you know will come up and you're slowly building up an amount. And 150 won't fix more, most cars, but after 10 months, you have 1,500. And if you just continue that on a regular basis, you have enough per car, by the way, for your cars. But also, we're looking for building an emergency fund because there's just stuff you can't foresee. Mm -hmm. And we, I probably shouldn't say this, my wife will probably kill me, but we got bed bugs. You know, bed bugs are not from bad hygiene. They're just hitchhikers. You know, if somebody brought them in a hotel and it was a brand new hotel, we took them home $4,200. Oh you don't budget for that or plan for that. So being able to set aside money for Christmas, for vacations, for insurances, yard maintenance, home maintenance, there's a lot of them. Then you'll realize you're not doing checkbook balancing anymore. You're actually managing the cash you have. Yeah. And over time, you'll find out if you use my program, exactly how much you need on average. So you know how much you spend. Yeah. Well, and, and everybody needs a coach. We all know that the best of the best in sports and everything else, they all have 
coaches, somebody to be accountable to and always helping them level up in this uh, space right here. We're talking about Doug as your personal coach for your finances. So yeah, and, and people have things come up like, oh my gosh, I, you know, this, this expense came up, I've got to get tires or I have to get my brakes done or I have to do something on my house. Well, those you can plan just as Doug said, you know, these things are going to come out when you come up, but when you buy a new car, you know how long you might plan on keeping it. Find out ahead of time what you need to budget for those expenses when you're buying a home. I provide the financing for that home. You can find out from the home inspector, which you should always get one, in what those future costs for the home are so that when you're working with Doug, he can help you really put that into your budgeting. So Doug, what is the fun fundamental difference with your approach to cash flow management? A lot of people say, okay, let's just put this in a savings account so we have some extra money. Uh -huh. And so there is no extra money. Every dollar you have gets a job in the spending plan. Even if the job is future income for next month, because we want to build up three to four months worth of income, or if it's a roof, or if it's we're going to have just an anniversary fund, a date fund, I mean, every dollar gets a job. So the conversation shifts from with couples from we can't afford it to where should we take that out of? Because everything's been assigned. Now, when I talked about unforeseen expenses, it's not perfect. You may get a roof, which by the way, we did. And I need a roof replacement. I didn't have 25,000 in my emergency fund. I don't know many people that do, mm -hmm. but that's what, that's what a roof costs. So this isn't a perfect approach. There's no panacea, but when you pay attention, you can make way better decisions. Yeah. And people are amazed sometimes where their money's going when they actually decide where they want it to go. And in fact, we started, uh, looking through our freezer near the end of the month when we said, wait, we're funding our vacation. We're funding all kinds of fun stuff. We don't want to spend more on groceries. Yeah. And isn't that just so exciting when you actually budget, you make no part of budgeting is writing something down every time you spend it before you make that, that purchase, uh, make note of it, whether it's on your app or uh, on your notepad, or wherever you're keeping that majority of people don't do that. And that's why they're wasting a lot of money. You're really going to think about it before you actually spend that money when you're actually physically doing that activity. And then also if you're always saving for something, just like Doug said, you're going to rethink everything that you spend. No more buying something uh, at the store and never actually opening it. And the next thing you know, a year or two years down the road, it's at your garage sale. That wouldn't happen if you're budgeting, making note, and always saving for something. So Doug, what is a common mistake of business owners who make good money? I often see business owners and, and they're great at making money. So they go, I need something else. So they try to make more money. And it's not a sustainable strategy. They often don't know how much of their cash they've already committed. Just like I said, we've committed to, if you own a home, yard maintenance and house maintenance and yeah. a lot of other things. Uh, so they don't know what they've committed. They don't have dedicated reserves. So they make their decisions based on their checking account balance. Mm. And then they have a short month and a lot of things come in, quarterly taxes and other things, and they're not clear. And it can be pretty devastating. And you'd be surprised, really, really smart people have not been trained in cash flow management. So they're brilliant at their job, but they find themselves often chasing their tail. And since they didn't also know, well, they just find, they just find themselves in a bind and it's completely preventable. Yeah, absolutely. And if they're successful in their business, they're not doing all of the finance stuff for their business. They've got their bookkeeper and, and, and all of that. So they're, they're, they don't maybe have those uh, skills that they're even getting in their business. So it's not uh, showing on their personal side a lot of the time as well. So Doug, why do you start with personal finances with small business owners that have cash flow challenges in their business? Well, first, I need to know what the business owner needs, what the business has to support. So, and th this isn't everything they want, but how much can I have consistently every month and not feel any cash flow stress? You know, maybe there's other stuff I want to buy too, and I own a business and the business could afford it. But rather than draining the business, put yourself on a paycheck that's enough to live on where you have no stress and you're in agreement with your spouse and you can move forward. And then look at the business and do the same process. What's the business needs to support? Mm -hmm. After I take out my money, set aside for taxes, set aside for profit, often business owners don't plan for profit before they make purchase decisions. 
I want to know I'm making a profit, even if I'm spending money. And so, you know, you could argue a little bit that a profit-based business is trying to generate as many profits as possible. A growth business is reinvesting. But the key is, let's make sure we're doing this intentionally and really know what we're making and then get on a quarterly bonus program that you're not living on. And that starts getting really fun because now there's little windfalls along the way. So, Doug, do you see most business owners not really understanding how much they actually need on a monthly basis to live on? No, and it's not just business owners. Financial planners tell me most of their clients are about 50% low on what they think they spend each month. That is so crazy. And you just can't keep it in your head anyway. Mm-hmm. You know, and we talked about averaging yard, yard and, and cars. Well, some years are bigger than the others, other than others, but over time, you can get a pretty clear picture, and it's pretty neat seeing your, it's not just neat, it's really great seeing your net worth grow, and not having money stress, and not having challenges with your spouse, because we can't afford that. I mean, those conversations just go away, and by the way, you mentioned wherever you keep track of stuff. I use a great program called YNAV, it stands for You Need a Budget, and it works really, really well. It sometimes can be a little complicated to set up, which is part of what I help people with. Awesome. Yeah. And I'm not only Doug is putting, helping you put the plan together, uh, helping you create that budget, understand what you're spending, uh, what you're wanting to do for your future and your life and your business, holding you accountable and providing the technology that you need to really do it efficiently. So Doug, uh, why don't we, you really hear a lot about cash flow management? So shocking. Yeah, you know, this one's a tough one. We need to really focus on, and I touched on it earlier, what it takes for us to move forward, both in our personal life and if we own a business in our business life. And it's just a skill that we need to develop. So uh, people just aren't trained on it. And accountants and bookkeepers don't do it. It's really rare for them to actually help you with cash flow projections and on an ongoing basis. So you need to learn the skill. Yeah, and it's a, that's not their their role, and that's why you need to have a personal coach like Doug with get priorities straight on your team so that you can really maximize your finances, maximizing your business, and ultimately maximizing your life. Doug, it's always a great, the greatest pleasure to have you in. And I know we've got you scheduled for another show coming up. And just thank you for the wealth of information, uh, your heart, and all of the people that you are supporting and helping in our local community. Thank you, Tina. I really appreciate being here. And coming up next to the Money Hour, you don't know what you don't know and it's costing you a fortune. I have John Anderson of Plan Smart Law Group right here on 1150 AM KKNW. You are listening to The Money Hour at 1150 AM KKNW, the Saturday, October 23rd show. You can also listen to my podcast, Facebook premiere, or you can listen to the show on my show YouTube channel. In addition, for more information on any of my upcoming events, you can go to tinamitchellevents.com. I am your host, Tina Mitchell, and I am here to help you build a strong financial blueprint one week and one show at a time. If you are hearing my show at a different time or day, you are listening to a rebroadcast. I'm here to answer any questions or connect you with the guests that I have on the show today. Please call the show at 1-855-411-50. Again, that's 1-855-411-50 or online at themoneyr.com. In studio right now, we have John Anderson of PlantSmart Law Group. You don't know what you don't know and it's costing you a fortune right here on 1150 AM KKNW. John, Welcome to the show. Thank you. It's great to be here again. Yeah, thank you for uh, for coming back in. Really excited to uh, have a conversation with you uh, today. So a little bit about John. Uh, John is an author, composer, musician, speaker, lawyer, husband, and father of five. His kids are between 21 and three, so he'll be actively parenting minor children for 33 years. 
crazy. John spent the first 10 years of his legal career in the courtroom litigating criminal defense, divorce, business, and probate matters before completely rethinking his practice and focusing on helping people avoid the crisis and problems that got them into court in the first place. John specializes in estate planning, long-term care planning, and probate. His book, Law, Lawyers Always Win, How Ignorance of the Law is Costing You Everything, is coming out later this year. During the pandemic, John started composing piano music and has released five singles with his first album coming out later this month. Wow, John, uh, quite the credentials uh, that you have and brings in definitely a lot of who you are as a person. So thank you again for being here. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. So we're talking today on the topic of what you don't know. Uh, it can really cost you a fortune. So what does you don't know what you don't know means? It means in estate planning on long-term care planning contacts. Yeah. So it's funny because what most people know about estate planning, wills and trusts and all of that, they've learned from TV and the movies. Uh -huh. What I often refer to as dramatic will scene. And, and you know what I'm talking about? If you've seen the movie Knives Out, it came out a couple years ago or, or so many shows, right? Somebody dies under suspicious circumstances. And what happens? The family gets together for the reading of the will. They they always either meet in the lawyer's office, which is always super nice, or in the family home, which is also always super nice. The lawyer pulls out the will from one of two places. It's either the briefcase or the top desk drawer, which is super funny because I've never, I don't know why you would keep someone's will in your briefcase when you're meeting in the office. And yeah. my top desk drawer has pens. So <laughs> you know, I've never put someone's will in, in there. And then, you know, but, it, but it's dramatic and it's exciting, right? So they open the paper and they start reading to the family. I declare this to be my last will and testament. And, and then what happens, right? Someone gets the, the yacht and someone gets the business and someone gets the family home and someone gets a million dollars. Someone is outed as an abuser. Someone is disinherited. There's some great reveal and everything descends into chaos. And we spend the rest of, our, of the movie or the show, right? Resolving the chaos and it's great and we love it. And pretty much everything we learn from that scene is completely wrong. But everyone buys into it and they think to themselves, oh, I obviously am not going to have a, a big dramatic experience. There's not going to be a big reveal. Mm -hmm. um, but clearly, if I just put a will in place, I'm good. And then, you know, my family will meet with a lawyer and it'll, they'll just distribute everything, right? Yeah, no. That I've never done in my whole career a dramatic reading of a will. I, I've never done a boring reading of a will. There's just no reading. It doesn't happen except in the movies, but that's where everybody gets their information. And it creates this scenario where people make decisions based on that. And therefore they don't make very good decisions. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So let's talk about the basics that people should know before they design an estate plan. Yeah. So it's really pretty straightforward. There's levels of planning, but at the foundational level, you, you're trying to accomplish three things. The three goals of estate planning are avoid court if you can. Yes. Avoid conflict because that's where all of the craziness comes out, right? We, we always want to avoid conflict. And oftentimes people will set up plans that actually build in conflict into the plan without knowing it. So we want to avoid conflict. And the last is the obvious purpose, right? You actually want to say what your wishes are. If, yeah. you, if, you don't, if you don't plan, you're not getting your wishes. You're simply accepting the state's default rules for you. And so those are the three goals that you need to understand. And then on the other hand, you have three ways to accomplish those goals. You can either utilize the default system, which is called probate, super fun. Not good. You can plan using a will as a foundational document, which is what everybody thinks that's the, that's the answer because that's all we ever hear about or see in, the, uh, in cinema. Or you can use these things called trusts. And so we're either going to go through probate, we're going to use a will, or we're going to use a trust as our foundational planning. Um, and that's what, what we need. And then, of course, you have your healthcare documents and things like that. Because if something happens to you, you want to be able to say, no, don't, uh, don't remove my arms or no, don't keep me on life support for 
for 16 months or you know those sorts of things it's important that we lay out those wishes too of course so john let's talk about uh probate what do you need to know about probate um it can be avoided is the first thing that that people should know it's a default hopefully oh. for you it is avoided because you don't want to get in probate absolutely it, it's easily avoided and what is probate people think oh this is the way that the system allows us to get all the money to the kids or to the family or whatever. No, no. I always tell people probate is a lawsuit that you file against yourself using your own money for the benefit of your creditors. Doesn't that because, sound crazy? I know, but that's exactly what it is. It's just, a, it's not complicated. It's not rocket science. It's just a giant checklist of things that we have to do. And the point of most of those things is to announce to all the world and give them notice, hey, so-and-so has died, they've left a pot of money. If you think you should get some of that money, please let us know so that we can make sure that you get paid before we give it to the family. And that's what most of probate is about. And so we do all of these things in order to accomplish that goal. Mm -hmm. And it takes time, the average probate in, you know, in Washington, it, it's usually under a year, but we're talking you know, for most people, eight, nine to nine months to a year to by the time you get everything done and taken care of. You're spending thousands of dollars on attorney fees. Most people spend between six and 10 grand on an attorney um, to, to get a probate case done, right? Uh -huh. um, and, and, it, and bank accounts get frozen. It's all public. Everyone out there you know, in the world can see what's going on. There's no privacy. That's not probate. Good, and, not and, a good place to be. Right. And, it's, it, and, and so, that, I mean, there's all these things surrounding probate, but the thing to know is uh, most people want to avoid it, and you can but you have to plan in order to do it because if you plan. don't plan, plan that's the default yes and in order to plan you need to make sure that you have an expert that can help walk you through that process so you don't make any costly mistakes so john let's go ahead and talk about wills what do you need to know about wills so here's the here's the big reveal for the day wills go through probate everyone thinks oh if i have a will i can avoid all of that probate nonsense mess right and the answer is wrong. A will, all that means is you've got this will sitting somewhere. And so you take the will and what the lawyer does is in addition to all the other things that they file in a probate case, they take the will and they file that too. And the will helps us answer the, the question, what do you want to have happen after we've taken care of all your bills? That's really the point of the will and that's all it does. Yes. And so a lot of, a lot of people think, hey, if I have a will, everything's easy and I can avoid this whole, whole mess. No, if you have a will, you're, you're going to make it clear that you want it to go to my kids in this way, or I want to preserve it and hold things out for my young kids. I don't want to give them a million dollars on their 18th birthday, or, you know, you get around all of the defaults, but it's still going through probate. And a lot of people come and sit down with me and we go through and teach them about how this stuff works. And they say, hey, I just needed to update my will. But then we learn about it and they say, wait a minute, I'm not sure I want to do it that way. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So then let's go ahead and move on to trusts. What do people need to know about trusts? Trusts are the way you avoid the probate. Mm -hmm. And and here too, people are so influenced by TV and the movies, right? What everybody has seen about trusts, um, they've seen only really two scenarios, right? The first is the trust fund family, the trust fund kids, right? bratty wealthy kids who are driving around in lamborghinis making poor choices right uh -huh. that's what we see uh -huh. and then the other scenario we see in the movies is the boardroom scenario right it's always typically some heiress right it's a it's a stereotypical blonde heiress who comes up with some business idea that the board <laughs> that's managing the family money laughs her to scorn and says no 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 that's dumb we're never going to allow you to do that and she goes and proves them all wrong and it's amazingly successful and voice control of the family fortune away from the board, right? Those are the two scenarios that we, and the only two scenarios that we ever see in cinema to talk about trust. But the reality is those are, that's a tiny, tiny, tiny subset of trust for the uber wealthy. Yes. There's this thing called a revocable living trust. That's not that at all. It's just a basic little mechanism that we use that's super cheap. And it helps you avoid probate and get control and put everything into a little box and manage it for your, for your family so that you can get all of those things to your kids the same way you want to, but you avoid all of the probate nonsense, all of the expense. And when you do that, oftentimes you save 
thousands and thousands of dollars that instead of going to the system or to the lawyers or to the government goes to your family and your kids and the, or your charities or your causes or your church or wherever you want it to go. Yeah. And that's why you're here, John, you know, really having uh, your financial coach like Doug, your financial planner uh, and your estate planner to really bring everything and your CPA, everybody is bringing things together to make sure you're in the best uh, situation. So John, beyond the basics, what should you consider next in connection with your planning? So you've got that foundational level. Yep. And then level two is let's look at estate taxes and make sure we're not paying those. Yes. And then level three is let's make sure that we're, we're, t- we're taking into account what you may need in the long run for long-term care. Yeah. Okay. Makes sense. So let's talk about long-term care. How do you plan for that? There's a lot of stuff on long-term care happening in Washington state right now. Oh, Washington is a mess right now for long-term care. So long-term care of course, is what, you know, when you can't take care of yourself and you need help. Yes. And that could be, I need a lot of help, maybe in a nursing home, or I need some help in a skilled nursing facility, or I just need a little help. And I, I want to stay at home, but I need help at home to, to do this, that, or the other thing. Medicare, for example, doesn't cover long-term care. So the only three ways to to take care of long-term care are you have to use your own money. Mm -hmm. You have to get long-term care insurance, which is impossible to get anymore in Washington now because of the craziness associated with a recent bill and and that, or you have to get Medicaid and and help from government. And so planning Uh, is the way that we sit down and figure out how we can avoid spending all of your money and still access oftentimes those governmental benefits so you can get the care that you need, but still have something left over for your, for your family. Yeah. So John, as we're wrapping up our time here, uh, I always say discounted service, discounted cost is discounted service and discounted service is discounted results. So someone listening to the show right now might think, well, gosh, I can just, you know, go do something free, the low cost legal websites and apps. Can you share as we're wrapping up our time, why not to do that and why they need to talk with somebody like you, an expert? That's really easy. And and there's a very popular $99 program out there that you can get to get your will in place. Uh Um, Well, we just learned about wills. And so maybe that's not what you need. But in order for that to work and uh, and be available as an app or an online program, it has to be just a template. And so that's all you're getting. You're getting a template. You're not getting education. You're not getting customization. You're not getting information that's going to help you make the right decisions. Yes. John, how do people connect with you? The best and easiest way, go to my website, go to plansmartlaw.com. There's information there and and all of my contact info is there. Call me and let's sit down and figure out what you really need and let me help you. I never bill by the hour. And as a result, it means that I'm there to answer questions and I'm happy to answer anybody's questions. But plansmartlaw.com is the easiest way to find me and start that process. Wonderful. Thank you so much for coming in and look forward to having you back, John. Thanks so much, Tina, for having me. Coming up next to the Money Hour, general Medicare information with Joyce Jonashite of Encore Life Health right here on 1150 AM KKNW. You are listening to The Money Hour at 1150 AM KKNW, the Saturday, October 23rd show. You can also listen to my podcast, Facebook premiere, or the show on my show YouTube channel. In addition, for more information on any of my upcoming events, go to tinamitchellevents.com. I am your host, Tina Mitchell. I bring into studio each week the best of the best experts in our local market on everything regarding your money. I'm here to help you in today's economy. Uh, now in studio, we have Joyce Jonashite of Encore Life Health General mm-hmm. Medicare Information right here at 1150 AM KKNW. Joyce, welcome to the show. Great to be here, Tina. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. We've got a great lineup with really important uh, experts that everyone needs. So a little bit about Joyce. Uh, Joyce has been working with seniors and veterans for over 15 years. First as an interior designer and then as an insurance broker. Along with her husband, she became her parents' full-time caregiver at home, navigating Medicare for them, 
it became clear that there had to be a better way to understand it. Now working in the insurance industry, her aim is to focus on the needs of individuals insured by Medicare. Joyce teaches free Medicare classes at Green River College and is a broker representative of multiple insurance companies providing all types of health and Medicare plans. She is licensed in Washington, Oregon, Arizona, and Texas to better serve you and your family. So uh, another thing and really important uh, and a lot of stuff going on with, with Medicare uh, as well, Joy. So why should you consider getting a plan review right now and open enrollment if you already have a plan or have a Medicare health plan? Yes, so right now, every year, uh, different insurance companies take that opportunity to be able to uh, present new plans. Their formulary may change, with, which is their list of drugs and how they're covered. So a drug that may be covered one year may not be covered the next or be more expensive. So I recommend that everyone takes advantage of talking to a broker like me. So we can look at what your plans will look like for the next year. We can go over all of your estimated costs for your medications and take advantage of the new benefits that are coming out. Yeah. So Joyce, what if somebody uh, asked you, well, why can't I just wait, um, do it sometime, you know, do my new plan anytime next year? Well, that is a problem because there are only very specific open enrollment periods. And this is the best one right now. So um, you may have a different open enrollment available to you in the next year but they're very specific rules. Only if you move, if you turn 65, or if you retire and get your Part B. So, um, and there are a couple others, but um, they have to, there's strict ruling on what you can actually do and when, so. <laughs> so Joyce, if you are turning 65 next year, which I'm not, I'm turning 54, but if you were, <laughs> when should you start applying for Medicare? I would suggest no later than three months before your birthday month, because you're going to need time, especially during COVID now when things are taking longer, to apply for your A and possibly your B. So there's different rules on B. So um, yeah, so but definitely I would at least wait for, or at least do it three months prior. Perfect. And can you get Medicare if you're under 65? In a few situations, yes. So there's uh, three situations where you can actually get Medicare early. Uh, one would be if you are on disability. So if you have SSDI, which is Social Security Disability Income, not SSI, that's different. Mm -hmm. But if you've had SSDI for at least two years, you're automatically enrolled in Medicare in your 25th month. Or if you have um, uh, kidney failure, you're able to do that, able to get on Medicare, or if you have ALS, so Lou Gehrig's disease. So those are a few examples of when you can get Medicare early. Okay, so are Joe uh, Nemeth and Joe Mon Montana really talking the truth about all of those benefits that you're <laughs> <laughs> Right, I know. I mean, everybody's seen those commercials, right? And maybe we're sick of seeing them. <laughs> but to tell you the truth, those are real benefits. So uh, depending on the plans that you have, that may be something that you qualify for. Mm -hmm. So I would definitely call me and find out what those are. And if, you, if it's something that uh, is available in your area. So some of them are county specific. So um, let's take a look and see if you're you know, located in the right place and if that's something you would be able to get. Yeah, great advice. Uh, so Jonas, or Joyce, if you plan on working past 65, what should you know to make the best decision for Medicare? Yes, so uh, a lot of folks are working past you know, their 65th birthday. And if you're working for a company that has 20 or more employees, the insurance that you would get from that company is actually considered creditable by Medicare. Oh. So you can, you can delay your Part B without a penalty as long as that insurance uh, is considered in that way by Medicare. Okay. And what is credible coverage after 65 according to Medicare? 
Yes, so you would have to have your prescriptions covered through your plan. Mm -hmm. And again, it would have to be a company that has at least 20 employees. So if you work for a small firm or you're a solo entrepreneur, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and get Medicare A and B. Okay. So then that would be primary. Got it. So what are the benefits if you apply for Part B and how much does that cost? Yeah, so Part B, uh, some folks have gone ahead and declined that. I would recommend not doing that if you haven't done that yet. Part B covers a lot. So it covers all of your doctor services in the hospital and out, all your specialists. It covers your durable medical equipment, which would be any wheelchairs or oxygen you might need. It covers outpatient surgery. So if you need cataract surgery, back surgery, that's under B, not A. Okay. If you need a physical therapist, that's also under B. So there's a lot that it covers and it's something that very likely in the future you're gonna need. Uh, as far as costs, the Part B premium for this year is $148.50 a month. Mm -hmm. And so uh, in some situations, if you are low income, you may actually get that paid to you. And there are some plans now who are offering a uh, Part B give back where a certain amount is actually uh, through you know, the federal government. It's not cash back to you, right? Uh -huh. But your Part B premium would be reduced. And there are different amounts that people are offering. There's $25, some say $60, $75 that they're giving back. So it's not your full amount, right? Okay. But it is a deduction. And that's why you have your Medicare representative like Joy, so she can help navigate and walk you through all of this Part B, Part A. So what if you <laughs> did decline to Part B now, but decided that you want it in the future? Right. So if you have creditable insurance, mm -hmm. it's okay to decline it or delay it. But if you don't have that and you want to wait and get it, there unfortunately is a Part B penalty and it is a permanent penalty. Oh, wow. So for every year that you don't have Part B, they would add 10% to the monthly premium. Wow. So that could get, you know, pretty hefty. So, um, yeah, definitely. I would recommend not delaying that. So how long do you have to apply for Part B when you're retired? Yes. So you actually have eight months after your retirement date. But if you're not going to have insurance for those, you know, eight months, then I would definitely apply for your Part B before you retire. Let them know when your retirement starts. Mm -hmm. So we can coordinate the start date of your Part B and your new Medicare health plan so that they coincide. Then you won't have a gap of coverage. You won't have to worry about any sort of penalty. So that's the best way to go. Get a hold of me before you retire. <laughs> yeah. So what would you say the biggest mistake is, Joyce, that you see people making when it comes to uh, the decision on Medicare? Oh, well, doing things out of fear because you don't know, right? Yeah. Or having your best friend tell you, oh, I love my plan. You need to get that plan too. Well, maybe it's not appropriate for you. Maybe you couldn't see your doctors if you went on that plan. So we look at all of that. We look at what your doctors accept. We look at all of your medications, how often you take them, what tier level they're on, what pharmacy you see, all of those are huge variables that can make a big difference in your cost for next year. Yeah. So Joyce, when I introduced you uh, today and read your bio, uh, you have a little bit of your story and the why behind getting into what you do now. Can you share a little bit more uh, about that? Oh, sure. Yeah. So I've actually been on Tina's show back when I was do doing interior design and I focused on aging in place for seniors at the time and veterans. And so, um, but soon after that, unfortunately, my mom fell and broke her hip and her collarbone in quick succession. And my dad started exhibiting signs of dementia. So I actually closed my business and my husband and I moved in to help them full time. And so I got to see on the consumer side, what, you know, how difficult Medicare can be because I had sold insurance prior, but just auto and home. And so I knew nothing about health insurance. 
So I saw how difficult it was to understand and how confusing. So I try to make it as simple and easy as I can. And I'm an educator, I love to teach. So I really enjoy teaching the class at Green River um, and making it really easy to understand. Yeah, and how often do you teach those classes, Joyce? Uh, they range from at least once a month, sometimes twice a month. Mm -hmm. And where should people go to if they're interested in attending one of your classes? Yeah, so there is a link on my website, uh, EncoreLifeHealth.com. Uh, but you can also go to Green River's um, you know, catalog and you would go into the continuing education and then click on the money matters and you'll see it there. It's called Medicare Made Clear. Okay. And I, I, I really love a lot of, I've interviewed uh, thousands of different business owners having my show for, uh, you know, over 11 years now. And uh, it's so interesting that a lot of business professionals almost all of the best of the best, there's a story attached to why they do what they do. Mm -hmm. So yeah. um, I'm sure by the process of going through all of the things that happened wrong really helped you put together what to do to provide the best service to your clients. What do you mm -hmm. enjoy most about what you do, Joyce? Oh, it's the little old ladies that come up to me after we find a good plan for them and getting the hug and saying, thank you so much, because I really had no idea what I was going to do, you know, and people just getting that peace of mind to know that that plan is specific to them and is going to be really, you know, the best plan for the next year. Yeah. So. And uh, as you said, giving the little old lady a, a hug as we're mm -hmm. wrapping up here uh, with about a minute left, are you still getting, are you getting in person or are you um, uh, doing a lot of virtual with your seniors? Yeah, I'm doing both. So right now I have three different tables throughout the Puget Sound where people can meet me face to face. Uh -huh. So uh, I am in the South End, I'm in Auburn and in uh, Puyallup. Okay. Uh, but you can certainly, you know, schedule times with me uh, via Zoom and, um, you know, and a phone call as well. So I'm available for, you know, whatever works the best for each person. That's wonderful. Well, Joyce, thank you so much for uh, coming back in studio and sharing uh, now with your, your new expertise in business and for helping the seniors. Uh, I was going to yeah, say thank you. local market, but more than our local market because you're licensed in multiple states. And oh, by the way, a side note on that, it takes a lot to be licensed in multiple states. So that definitely shows the passion. <laughs> it have a lot to do with your continued ed. Yeah, yeah, yeah thank exactly. Thank you so much, Joyce, for being here. Yeah, thank you for having me. Absolutely. I'm your host, Tina Mitchell, your local mortgage expert, signing off for the day. Enjoy the rest of your Saturday. I look forward to talking more money with you next week, right here on 1150 AM KKNW. Mm -hmm.